This is my fourth video on solubility equilibrium. It's going to cover the points on the screen, and uh, if you're not familiar with KS expressions and doing calculations with them, then um, you're going to want to watch some of the earlier ones, otherwise this one won't make sense. This one's all about ionic products, and we can use these to uh, determine saturation of a solution and if a precipitate forms. So if we have a solubility reaction, it's an equilibrium reaction, it has a KS expression and a KS value. There it is there for this example. It's quite a low number. Um, what this means is that this solubility reaction will reach equilibrium when the iron concentrations are quite low. Whenever the barium ion and the sulfate ion concentrations multiply to give you this number, then the solubility reaction is going to be at equilibrium. Uh, but in all situations, we're going to have quite low concentrations. But um, when we use an ionic product, we use this to determine if the limit for these ions has either not been reached, has just been reached, or has been exceeded. And um, depending on which one of these we get, uh, the solution is going to behave in a certain way. Okay, uh, An ionic product is just very, very straightforward to calculate. What we do is that we use the KS expression and we just substitute in the concentrations of ions that we have in that particular solution. So in this case, the ionic product will be the barium ion concentration multiplied by the sulfate ion concentration because that's what the KS expression says. So when we work this out, uh, there are three possible results. If we ever get an ionic product less than the KS value, then our absolute limit for barium and sulfate ions in the solution has not yet uh, been reached. That means we could add some more barium sulfate, and um, as a result of this, uh, some of the salt would dissolve, and it would keep on dissolving until the barium and sulfate ion concentrations actually reach the equilibrium point. Another situation is that the ionic product may be equal to the KS value, then we've reached the absolute limit for those ions in the solution. They will stay in solution, but no more will dissolve, we say it's saturated. And the final one is that if the ionic product ever exceeds the KS value, then the two concentrations of the ions are too high. They cannot stay in solution, the equilibrium shifts to the left, and we're going to get some salt forming as a precipitate. As a consequence of it shifting, the iron concentrations drop down until it reaches equilibrium. This can be achieved if we actually got a solution of barium nitrate, perhaps, and a solution of sodium sulfate. Um, in doing so, we could get the barium iron concentration and the sulfate iron concentrations exceeding the ionic product, the, the KS value limit. And um, if that's the case, they will form a precipitate of barium sulfate. Here are a couple of examples of ionic product calculations. Uh, here's a question here about barium sulfate. We want to know if a solution with that concentration is either saturated or unsaturated. Uh, we're given a KS value. It's an equilibrium constant, so it varies based on the temperature. Uh, we're given it at 25 degrees. What we're going to do here is that we're going to write an equation for the salt dissolving in the first place. We can then write the KS expression that comes out of that. Um, once we've got the KS expression, um, we can calculate the ionic product value as if it is the KS value itself. Then we compare the ionic product value to the KS value and see which one is highest. Um, the equation for barium sulfate dissolving is this. We can then write the KS expression that matches it. Um, in this question, we're told how much salt is dissolved in one liter of volume. Um, if we know that number, we can work out the concentrations of the two ions uh, once it has dissolved, because there are one-to-one -one mole ratios with the ions and the salt. The iron concentrations is going to be the same as the salt concentration. With those two iron concentrations, 
um, I can put them into the ionic product expression, which is exactly the same as the KS expression. So replace the square brackets with the actual values I have. Um, the number I get is 4.9 times 10 to negative 6 squared, effectively. Uh, the value of that is 2.40 times 10 to negative 11. If we go back to the original KS value, um, it is much larger than the actual IP value. So we could therefore say this is not a saturated solution of the salt. If it was, these two numbers would be equal. There's a second example here where we need to predict if a precipitate would form. Um, once again, we're going to write the equation for the salt dissolving, and we're going to write the KS expression. It might seem strange writing the equation for the salt dissolving when we're predicting a precipitate, but we need this equation because it's what the KS value relates to. We're going to ask ourselves whether or not this equation will go backwards or not. Uh, the two iron concentrations are given to us. We're told once they are mixed, those are the concentrations, so we can just put those concentrations directly into the IP expression, which is of course the same as a KS expression. Um, if we solve for the IP value, we should find that the IP in this case is going to be equal to 5.63 times 10 to negative 5. We compare the IP value to the KS value for what we were given. The IP value was much, much higher in this case. Because the IP is greater than KS, a